Hey guys, before I move on, I wanted to mention a couple of these capacitors that I glossed over. The first ones on here are marked gang, and there's two sections. Well, that's this guy. That's the tuning capacitor and two gangs here. Unlikely you'd ever need to replace one of these unless this had some physical damage. In which case, your best bet would be to ask on some of the antique radio forums and see if somebody has a replacement for it, because these are not commonly made anymore. The other capacitors on here that I wanted to mention are marked ceramic. You might also see some on your parts list that are marked as mica. Those rarely go bad. They're made out of minerals, unlike the paper capacitors that are made out of uh, paper and wax. These are made out of mineral compounds, and they generally last a long, long time. In this radio, you can see there's one up here. The micas are usually in rectangular or square boxes with colored dots on them. And here's one of the ceramic guys, uh, on this potentiometer here. The ceramic ones are usually in cylinders or discs. Alright, so we've examined the radio. We have our shopping list. So, let's order up some capacitors. The best website I know of to get parts for vintage radios is JustRadios.com that specializes, as they say, in capacitors, resistors, and schematics for antique radios. They're based out of Canada. I'm in Chicago, and when I place my orders, I usually get my stuff within 7 to 10 days, so not too bad. They break their site up into two shopping cart areas, resistors and capacitors. Let's look at the resistors first. To refresh your memory, here's our list of resistors we need. So let's look for a 22K half watt. They sell both carbon composition and metal film. The original resistors are all carbon composition. If you want to keep it really authentic, you can use those, but they only offer those in half watt, not in the 1 watt, 2 watt, or 5 and 10 watt sizes. I'm going to use metal film. It's not what they originally used, but these. Uh, are more accurate and last a lot longer. So uh, let's go with those. They come in packages of five and there's a column here with all the values so we need to find 22K which is right here. 22K ohm half watt 55 cents. So basically they're 11 cents each. Not too bad. Now we need a 1 mag half watt. Same deal, scroll down right there at the bottom, 1 mag. And so on for the, for, uh, for the other uh, resistors. Now we also need some 1 watt resistors like 33 ohm. Let's the next column over. There we go. And scroll down and 33 ohm, 1 watt, you get 5 for 59 cents and so on. So, that's the deal for ordering resistors. Capacitors are a little bit trickier because of the packaging that's changed over the years. Originally they all came in what they call axial packaging. Axial meaning the, re the leads came out of the axis of the resistor, like the axles on a car. Same with these uh, old electrolytics. New stuff is far more common to find what they call radial lead, uh, mainly because of circuit boards. Typically these would be a couple holes filled in the circuit board. These would be mounted vertically and soldered below. But if you hunt around, you can get modern axial lead capacitors like this and like this. Also commonly with the replacements for the paper caps are these. Well, these are all plastic film caps. These are known as sometimes orange dip, orange drop. Very popular, high quality, a little bit larger, a little more expensive, but have a, good, a very good reputation. And these, well, they're kind of generic. Sometimes I refer to them as maybe a lemon drop or yellow dip. I'm going to be using these for this radio. It's not a, it's, it's an inexpensive radio and I've got a lot of these on hand because I bought a big grab bag of them and they come in a wide variety of values. So that's what I'm going to go with. Just Radio also sells those. So let's go to the capacitor shopping cart. 
and they're listed on along the left hand side here. The first category, the orange dip I mentioned. And some more of those. And then we get into the tubular axials, the polypropylene and the polyester. So for example, we need a 0 0.02 400 volt. All the capacitors on the left hand side of this site are all 630 volts. So any of these will work just fine any radio in place of a 200, 400 volt capacitor, what have you. Now, it just so happens they're out of the 0 0.2. So I will go with the 0 0.22, which is just fine. These old capacitors typically at a tolerance of plus or minus 20%. So it's well within the range we're looking for. We also need a 0 0.1 which is right there, no problem. 0 0.05, no problem. And then we need a 0 0.18, which they don't have again. I'd go with the 0 0.2 as the closest match. And finally we needed two electrolytics, a 30 and a 50 at 150 volt. Capacitors, the electrolytics, I should say, they do have different voltage categories, unlike the, the film capacitors, which are all 630 volt. These, they come in 25 volt, 50 volt, 160, which is pretty close to the 150s, but like I mentioned in my previous videos, I want to have a little bit more of a safety margin than that, so I'm going to go with the 250s. Right here. We need a 30. They have a 33 that's close enough, and for the 50 I'll go with a 47. If you total all the parts up, we're looking at less than 20 bucks, so not too bad I think. Next up I'm going to cover uh, a different site where you can get some more specialty items like grill cloth and replacement decals.